The day has come and it is time to depart for cruising week. Maybe you've been around for a while, maybe this is your first time here. Maybe you found out about the car on the channel through Ocean City's cruising week, but I'm about to drive my 1963 Ford Galaxy 500 on the furthest drive it's been on yet. The drive is approximately four hours avoiding tolls on highways, so about three hours, 45 minutes really. But this is going to be the longest drive. Probably going to title this video something along the lines of taking my 1963 Galaxy on a 150, 200 mile trip, something like that, whatever it is. I don't know. I didn't do the math. I didn't check yet. But regardless, I'm going to hop in. I'm going to get started. I'll document my journey down. And then this will kind of be a multi-segment cruising week vlog because I'm sure I won't put this all in one video. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's hop in. Let's get her started. Let's get going. I've got my trunk just about loaded to the brim here. I've got my impact, wheel chocks, detailing stuff just in case it gets dirty down there. I've got some extra gasoline, DeWalt tool set, little Orioles chair to sit in while I'm out there, rapid pump jack in there, and a whole bunch of extra fluids, jumper cables, etc., funnels, you name it. So now I'm going to hop ahead, get inside, start her up, warm her up, and get going. You can also see the little sticker that I threw in the back windshield there. I don't know if I like it or not. We'll see. Here goes nothing. It is 6.15 right now. I am ready for takeoff. I'm about to leave. The GPS actually says that it's going to be 3 hours and 22 minutes to get there. So like I said, 6.15. We'll see what time I get there. It said it's 151 miles. Right now we're sitting at 121,876 miles. So I'll go ahead and take a picture of that. And I might stop at some point and get gas. See how we're doing MBG wise. In the meantime, let's get heading out. I just filled up here at Wawa. Sitting at... 121,896 miles, so we got a full tank now. It says empty because it's not started, but that'll give us a good metric of what to go off of when I'm calculating MPGs. Anyways, so far so good. Engine got hot now that it turned off. It was running around 150, 160 when driving, 180 at stoplights, and it gets up to about 200, 210 once I put it in park. So once I put it in park, I turn off the engine, that is. Anyways, let's get back on the road. 122,035 miles. We are here at my buddy's place where I'm staying for the night. So all things considered, it was relatively anticlimactic. Can't really complain. The engine temperature is going to spike now that I'm parked, but we're here. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to go say hi, and I'll get ready for the night. As you can see by the tag here, we are here at the convention center today. And just sitting here at about 240 degrees, so that's about the hottest it's ever been by quite a long shot, but hopefully it'll cool down now that I have the hood open. Here at the convention center, it's Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, something like that. We're looking around. We got Maggie and Kate here with me today. I'll have some other friends stopping by along the weekend, but we're going to look around. We're going to see some of the cars, and then we will keep on going. We're back now we just want to make a quick little visit out to pick up the paperwork and head back took a quick little glance around i'm going to spend more time tomorrow saturday and sunday looking around not sure what the rest will hold for today but i'll keep you updated i didn't end up recording too too much yesterday because we only went down to the convention center to pick up the stuff and didn't really do a ton more beyond that it is friday morning now and now i'm going to get out get more into the car scene and kind of see what's out there what's going on I'm gonna go car spotting a bit try to catch up with some friends i'll kind of document anything that happens anything interesting so We'll go ahead, get the galaxy started, and get her down into the city. Go ahead, prime that gas. Let her warm up a little bit. She's had her few minutes of warming up. Let's go ahead and get her on the road. Alrighty, she's warmed up. Foot off the gas. She's holding idle. Seems pretty happy, hopefully. We can get this show on the road and all will look good. Coming outside of West Ocean City into Ocean City, I noticed we got another Galaxy out here. This one's a two-door coupe. Drop top. Pretty cool, though. I'm sitting here on Coastal Highway now. I haven't honestly seen too, too many cars. I swear I saw more yesterday, but the weather was also a lot nicer yesterday. It's not raining, raining, but it's just sprinkling a little bit to cover my windshield. I'll show you that in a second, but I'm going to go catch up with some friends, and we're going to go grab some breakfast. So I'm trying to see a lot of people, do a lot of things. Lights just turn green. I'm going to put my phone down. Here's what I was talking about. You can see that windshield's just covered over with rain. Kind of sucks, but I mean, what are you gonna do? That's why I'm gonna grab breakfast now while the weather looks like this. We're at the little house of pancakes. Here to grab breakfast. We'll go a little bit car spotting after that. We caught some cool stuff on the way up. There's some cool stuff in the parking lot. I'll show around and see what we got going on afterwards. Road 
breakfast is over, so we're just corresponding in the parking lot. A lot of good stuff to be seen here. It's a beautiful car. What's it say? Mad dog. We just left Ronald Jonathan Surf Shop. What's up, Michael's YouTube channel? This is the XJ. You might have seen it on the channel. Uh, it's a real nice rig. And there they go. There go the fellas. Off to meet up with some more now. I am here now with Tyler's truck, which has made appearances on the channel before. I'm waiting for him to come out. He's here with Hope, and we're going to go ahead and head down to the convention center. Look around a little bit there, then go down to the inlet afterwards. So is the plan for now, at least. We'll see what we actually end up doing, but more car spotting to come. Well, we were on the way down to the convention center and came up upon Rick's truck, so we had to go and say hi to Rick, of course. He's coming over, so I'm going to show him the Galaxy because he's been excited to see it. Here, right off of Jamestown. See the two old Fords here. Studebaker. A couple old Chevrolets down there. I've showed Rick's truck a couple times here, but I make sure that I show it every single time I have one of these videos uploaded from Cruising Week because it's just an absolutely gorgeous truck. It's a 68 as you can see right there. Real clean inside and out. Look at that. I parked here probably a half hour ago, and since then there's been a huge collection of cars that has pulled up. It's pretty cool. We got a lot of old Chevys right now on this line. Ford's down at the end, which is where I'm parked. But a whole lot of everything. A lot of exhaust smell going around, but I am not minding it. It's just cool to see everything pulling up. Don't get me wrong, I like my Rambler, even though I'm trying to sell it. But if I was keeping that long term and I ever got a deal on an AMX instead, man, I would take that in a heartbeat any day. The 70, the sticker says. These are just such cool cars. I mean, look at that interior. The lines of this thing, look at that sloped roof. AMX badging on the side and fat tires on that thing. AMC made some cool cars back in the day, but these AMXs were just awesome. Cool Bronco rolling up. GTO, Camaros, Pontiacs, you name it. We've got a lot of everything today. bit different than my 64 classic but found another rambler this one's a rambler american i don't know the year but clearly it's had a lot done to it as you can see the inside and outside are very clean engine bay as well it is pristine in there 
It's a pretty cool looking wagon. Look at that, 70,000 for sale. Well, it did take a little bit longer than we initially anticipated, but I have the Galaxy parked up here next to this old Bronco here. I wanted to get it next to some old Fords. We're going to walk around. We're going to check a little bit car spot and whatnot and see what all we got going on. So hopefully some more good stuff. I don't know. I'll let you know what we see. This one's a 56 Ford. I assume an old Fairlane of sorts. But looking inside, that is... That's not your everyday roadster. This will be quite fun to drive though. Definitely turn some heads. I've just been walking around checking out some of the vendor tents, checking out some different cars, things like that. I got a free little Edelbrock hat here, so that's pretty cool. The only other thing that I gotta say that's different this year, especially with having something old, is just having a lot of sets of eyes on you. It's pretty cool. I definitely bought it for several reasons, but one of which is to have something to show off and get people to look at and give someone else a pretty sight to see. Kind of a gift to myself, but also a gift to others if I'm making sense there. But regardless, I'm definitely not used to driving anything that low before. I've bought them down a couple times now, and I'm hoping that's the last time that I do. But I mean, the Lexus in the Explorer and the Ram, even in the Rambler, I've been good with not having to worry about hitting anything, going over steep declines, inclines, whatever. I've had to worry a good bit about that because if I bottom out bad enough, I'm pretty screwed, but it's definitely something new to get used to. Anyways, back to where I came from. Still just walking around here, like I was saying before, it's pretty empty here for the most part. It's not super packed. I'd assume that most of the show was going on earlier in the day. Still some cool old things to see here. I've seen old Camaro, old Thunderbird. Plenty of stuff to be seen. This one's a 57. Second owners of the vehicle, it says, but it's cool to see here. Big trucks. Another old Galaxy. That's definitely not stock. I also wonder every single time I come here, just how much fluids are lost. How many gallons? Oil, brake fluid, coolant, you name it. I've definitely lost some coolant already, but just something I've always wondered. It's clean inside, too. It's always cool. I'm always a big fan of resto mods. It's kind of cool to give an old car a second life, modern interior, modern powertrain, but... Same old, same old exterior. Nice and shiny, though. This is cool to see here as well. It's a 1927 Ford. It's crazy to look at this, because in just three years, it'll be 100 years old. I think it's impressive to say that I own a 60-year-old car, but owning something that's almost 100 years old, I mean, that's a feat that most people can't say, and even most car guys won't ever be able to say. Definitely unique. They were coming across the yeah. Another thing, now that I'm back at the Galaxy, that, you know, kind of scares me a little bit. All those puddles underneath there. I know that at least one of them is for me, because once again, it is a little bit hot. I topped off the coolant, so it did spit a little bit out of here. So, 
I know that's me, but the rest of them, I don't know if their car's before me. It doesn't look like it. Or, I mean, it does look like it. Sorry. It doesn't look like it was for me. I don't know. I'll just keep it on the fluid, see how she looks. I could not tell you what engine that thing is running, but it sounds good. Oh, there's Tyler and Hope. Chris, that's my, that's my next, my next right there. 1967 Acro bus. That's a new one. I can't say I've ever seen this before. I will have to do a Google search on that because I don't know what I'm looking at. I'll show you the inside a little bit. Huh. I've done my Google research and found that this is actually a Checker Aero Bus. So it's a 1967 Checker Aero Bus, as seen by the badging here. But once again, not Acrobus, still never seen one of these before, and holy moly, that thing is loud. We left the boardwalk in lit a good while back. We went to the convention center for only a few minutes, not too long. I dropped off Tyler and Hope back at their place where they're staying, and then I'm going to meet up with Jameson and Maggie for dinner. So I'm gonna head out, I'm gonna catch up with them. Hopefully we'll grab something good to eat. We're heading to 45th Street Tap House. Never been there before, but hoping it's good because it seems like it will be. So I've been driving the Galaxy around, just got gas. I'll update you guys on how much that costs, MPG, or how much that costs, and what that's looking like MPG wise. I have to calculate that, but I'm curious to see. Time to do the math. When I filled up, I was at 122,114 miles flat. When I filled up at home, I was at 121,896 miles flat. Both times I filled up to a full tank, so hopefully my measurements here should be pretty accurate. That is 218 miles. I filled up with 17.719 gallons of gas. I'll do the division real quick. That puts us at 12.3 miles per gallon. I was assuming that I get somewhere around 12. A lot of people online said they get about 14, so I was hoping for 12, and I guess 0.3 higher is higher than 12, so I'll count that for something. Anyways, it's dinner time. We just finished up dinner here at 45th Street Tap House. What do you guys think? It was good. We got a, we got a uh, pickle Dr. Pepper. Yeah, according to the waitress that we had, pickles and Dr. Pepper is a very interesting combination to try, which Jameson seemed to like, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know, I didn't try it. Pregnancy approved. The Dr. Pickle. The Dr. Pickle, but <laughs> anyways, the pickle. That's, that's enough for uh, dinner time. We'll go out and see what there is to see tonight. I'm currently waiting to make a U-turn here. I've been waiting for a little bit now. The streets of 127th through like 118th are pretty packed, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of classic cars out tonight. I'm honestly seeing more here now than I did at the shows earlier, but it's pretty cool. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm getting a lot of attention in this, which I like for sure. It's definitely a head turner. And I've sounded off the Dixie horn a couple times, which people around me seem to appreciate. I think it's pretty cool actually having something to show off this year. So keep on cruising. Hopefully find a spot to park and then I'll be able to stand outside and watch these cars pass by a little bit. Oftentimes I'll see the trail of this leaking some sort of fluid and think man poor guy whoever that might be unfortunately tonight I am that guy underneath of my car it looks as if my transmission has decided to call it quits or at least one of the seals for the transmission fluid as there is pretty much no fluid left in it whatsoever and it is all leaked out I'm sitting here on the side of the road now kind of not on the side of the road, but in the parking lot now. I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to get through this one because I'm 150 miles from home. This is my only mode of transportation to get home. And I'm, I'm a lot calmer on camera than I am in my head right now. This, this all happened probably like five minutes ago. And I'm, let me collect my thoughts. 
Alrighty, I'm slowly starting to gather a plan here, so I'm just gonna pop a jack underneath of here, pull it up and see what we got. Hopefully it's just a blown out seal for a line or a bad gasket around the pan. I'm really hoping so, because that would be the easiest fix and I could probably fix that on my own before getting it home. It just really does suck to have something else to worry about now. Let's get started. So my cruising week vlog has turned into a Pittsburgh three ton low profile jack unboxing, unfortunately, but let's get this bad boy open for the first time. I've got the jack out, I've got my flashlight. Let's hop underneath to see what we're looking at. Well, you can kind of see it underneath of here where that drip is right there. It's all been dripping from that interior cover of the bell housing. The lines and everything are pretty clean up there as you can see. It is kind of hard to see, but it's all good up there. So it looks like it is coming from somewhere on the interior side there, somewhere in the bell housing. It doesn't look like it'll be making it out of here tonight and it doesn't look like it'll be making it home from Ocean City this weekend. So that's um, those the words I'm looking for. Very upsetting. I don't know. I got, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm about to make a phone call to AAA and hopefully I'll be able to get things figured out there. One AM and get rescued now. What was that? Well, here's the stain. That is quite some carnage left behind. You can see that it rolls up to there, and you can see right where I turned around. So, here she sits on the flatbed. It was really hard to get it up there because, of course, the thing sits so dang low. But she's up there now. We did put some wood chocks underneath of it to get it up there. It's been a process. It's, I think, probably 1.15 in the morning at this point. I was able to kind of guide him up there. There she goes. Well, she just came off the trailer. Here she is. She will be sitting here until further notice. Probably going to push it into the driveway tomorrow, just get it out of the way. But for now, I'm going to cut the video here. I'll leave the rescue mission, rest of the weekend, vlog, whatever you want to call it, in for the rest of the video. I, this, obviously, I was planning on splitting this into two videos already. This is not at all how I was expecting the first one to end, but... Life is full of surprises. You win some, you lose some. Tonight I lost, but I'm hoping we'll win and come back better than ever. So I have no idea how I'm going to get it home. I have no idea how I'm going to get it worked on. I don't know if I'm going to do the work. I don't know where I'm going to get the money to do this because I just put a lot of money into getting that ready to fix and a lot of money into the Lexus as well. But I don't know. Time shall tell. I'll say my prayers. I'll hope for the best. We shall see. Everything works out in the end. I'm a firm believer in that. We're going to come out stronger than ever with this one. But... Anyways, that's going to be it. It is 2.17 in the morning right now, so I'm quite tired and I want to go to bed. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do that. I'll recharge and I'll get back to the next video starting tomorrow. Thanks for watching this one. Subscribe.